Fuck all these niggas and bitches, they dead to me. I got the sauce, I got the remedy. Say you my dog, but act like an enemy. I make a call and turn you to Kennedy. I'm wasting my time, I'm wasting my energy. Shot for my confidence, shot for a better man. I just don't trust none of y'all. Every time I say something, it's get twisted up and thrown out in so many different publications. Try to tear me down with my words that I say. So when I don't say nothing, it's a problem. I just want to play ball. I want to go to the gym and go home. That's all. Is that a problem? All right, then. So, coming off of amazing performance versus the Boston Celtics, Kevin Durant has been crucified to a lesser degree of him being a leader of the of a team, of him joining a seventy three and nine Warriors team, ended up winning two championships with that team, of him just being Kevin Durant. So, I wanted to make this video and saying and explaining why. Kevin Durant is the most understood superstar in NBA history. <laughs> What's good, y'all? It's your boy, Will. We're back again with another video. Now, before we get into the video, if y'all love NBA content, y'all love NBA commentary, give your boy a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'm dropping every week. I'll be dropping even more coming, up, coming soon for y'all. I appreciate y'all for the support. Now, Kevin Durant, you know, drafted second overall in 2007. By the Seattle Supersonics, now known as the OKC Thunder. His rookie season, he averaged 20 points. The next season is they are still the Seattle Supersonics. He averaged 25 points in the second season of the NBA. Then we fast forward in which they are now known as the OKC Thunder. This man won a scoring title. Not one, but two. I believe he won. I know he won one with the OKC Thunder. Averaging 27 points per game. And you know, in this, this day and age, in this generation, and this season, Kevin Durant's averaging 28 points. This man is not even top five in scoring. That's how crazy the scoring has been in this generation. Back then, he could easily win a scoring title. In today's game, it's going to be hard for him. Now, fast forward when he, in 2012 season, 2012-2013 season. Kevin Durant had all the whole, the whole squad with him. He had Russell Westbrook. He had a sixth man and now who was a superstar, still a star in this game, James Harden. He had Serge Ibaka, who was known as Serge Ibaka. He had Deion, I, believe, I don't think he had Deion Waiters this year, but I think the next couple of years he had Deion Waiters. Tabo. He also had role, good role players coming off the bench. He had Derek Fisher come off the bench, give him buckets. Old Derek Fisher. Unfortunately, that squad ran up against the Miami Heat, which they had LeBron, D Wade, and Bosch. And where they were trying to get revenge for what they had what they did, especially what LeBron did in that 2011 finals versus the Dallas Mavericks. So the so OKC Thunder lost him five. So that was Kevin Durant's first hiccup. He's still young. Now, fast forward to 2016, in which this was OKC's best shot, literally their best shot to win it all. They went against up against the 73-9 Golden State Warriors, in which they had them on the ropes. This is when they had their whole squad. Westbrook. They didn't have James Harden this time. James Harden got traded to the Houston Rockets before that. But they had Westbrook, they had Andre, Andre Roberts, who was a defensive pest, but obviously couldn't put a, a ball in the ocean. Sergio Blanca, you had Deion Waiters. OKC had an amazing squad. And matchup-wise, they definitely matched up against the Golden State Warriors. That's why they was up 3-1 against the Golden State Warriors. 
They lost game five, in which we expected Go State to bounce back at least at home because they were the best team at home in the season and best team in, in, a, in general, right? Game six came. People saying Kevin Durant choked. In my opinion, he could have he could have been a little more aggressive, but I think Russell Westbrook was the reason why they kind of lost the game. In my opinion, he was turning the ball. He turned the ball over like four straight times in the last five minutes. And Clay Thompson was Clay Thompson. This is why they call him Game Six Clay Thompson. Okay, so yes, Kevin Durant could be more aggressive, but for them for them to really crucify him for that. And then Game Seven came. Kevin Durant showed up. Russell Westbrook showed up. They was just it was just not enough because Curry, Draymond Green had a great Game Seven, and Clay Thompson. And so Kevin Durant made the move by joining the seventy three nine team, who choked a three one lead in the finals versus LeBron, Kyrie, and the Cleveland Cavaliers. He wanted to join that squad. He wanted the easy way out. Now, is this the same thing as LeBron? No, stop it. I don't want to hear that dumb argument. If you want to make that argument, you're a casual fan. You're a casual. But anyways, when Kevin Durant joined the squad, the league was over. Everybody knew who was going to win. Okay? You have a two-time scoring champ. 2014 MVP. Man was crying getting that MVP when his mom was up there. Man is an easy seven foot bucket that we that nobody can stop. You join an MVP and a champion in Steph Curry, the greatest shorter guys created, Steph Curry, with Klay Thompson, who is the top five greatest shooter we ever have ever seen, with Draymond Green, who's the leader of that team, and they were 73 and 9 before that. The year before. And you joined that team. Who is going to be that? Not even LeBron and Gary. No. So we know right away. KD is going to get crucified for that. And he did. And was deserved. Same with LeBron when he joined Miami. So he's always going to have that stigma under him. Now let's fast forward because obviously they won two championships together when they, he joined that team. They won two. Let's fast forward when he wants to actually get something on his own, build his own team around him, and do it did his way. He joined Brooklyn Nets. He wanted Kyrie to come. Kyrie came with him. He also got James Harden eventually. The furthest they got. Is the Eastern Conference semifinals. Now, obviously, a lot has to do with injury. Too many injuries that happen, unfortunately. But I'm going to say this. Kevin Durant doesn't deserve to be crucified with the Brooklyn Nets. He doesn't. The man in game five dropped a, almost a Fifty triple double versus Giannis when he didn't even have James Harden or Kyrie on the floor. He's like giving the ball. He put his team on his back and won that game five. Giannis responded in game six at home, and in game seven, KD did the same exact thing. He was, if he didn't have a size fifteen, they would have been. They would have made the finals. And they probably would have won the finals. Without Kyrie. And a hobbled James Harden. But we want to put blame on him because of that? Oh, let's not forget the sensitivity that he, he does have. That he, he cuts back on Twitter. The Twitter fingers. With the fans. Not only the fans, his former teammates and Kendrick Perkins. And that was one of the funniest Twitter battles I've ever seen in my life. One of the funniest ever. He want they want to crucify him for that, but in my opinion, I I'm thankful and grateful for a superstar in this league to clap back at his fans like that. We don't have many too too, too many superstars that clap back on Twitter, like Kevin Durant. He doesn't care. 
He don't care about the glamour. He don't care about the fame. He wants to play ball. But we keep trying to b get blaming him for not quote unquote being a leader. And this is my definition of leader. There's two. There's there's a vocal def there's a vocal leader on the bench, and there's a vocal leader on the court who just doesn't talk much, goes out there and does his job and hoops. I believe Kevin Durant is that, isn't he? If not, who is who is that on the Phoenix Suns right now? Devin Booker? You could say that. But who was that on the Brooklyn Nets? If we want to talk about him not being a leader, who was the leader on the Brooklyn Nets? Please say that. Please tell me that. Comment that, comment that down below in the comments. It wasn't Kyrie. It wasn't James Harden. But being a leader, you have to be vocal. Disagree. There's two types of leaders, like I said. There's a vocal leader on the bench in a locker room. That's Draymond Green. There's a vocal leader on the court. That's LeBron. That's MJ. That's Kobe. Because we can all say, oh, Kobe was an a hole. Yeah. But we see a leader. Is, did, will anybody deny that? Hmm. But why are we deny that for Kevin Durant? Because he joined the Warriors? Because he didn't get it done with Brooklyn Nets? So if you think Kevin Durant had more championships, at least three or four, and he got one by himself, he would be a leader then? Let's, let's stop. Let's stop with the hypocrisy. Let's stop it with it. Okay? Leave Kevin Durant alone. This man, all he wants to do is hoop. That's all he cares about. He wants to hoop, win championships, go home, repeat. And he's been hooping. Not just this season, not this last season, his whole career. Yes, that blame is that he joined that Warriors team. Yes, okay, cool. We're past that. This is 2024, ladies and gentlemen. Leave him alone. He just want to who? Stop talking about him being a leader or, or a ball or this and that. Kevin Durant is one of the best players we ever, we ever witnessed. He's definitely a top three scorer we ever witnessed in the NBA history. Mike Gondal is one of the top 15 players of all time. Keep hooping, Kevin Durant. We support you. That's all I got to say for this video. If you really enjoy, give your boy a subscribe to the channel if you're new. Comment down below. Is he really the Mr. and the Superstar in the league? I really explain why he is. And just comment down below any more ideas and thoughts in this video. I appreciate you guys tuning in for this video. Be a boy, Will. I'm